Hello friends, for today's video I'm going to be going through some anticipated releases for the month of October and I'm just going to jump right into it. First on October 1st we have the fourth and final secret project by Brandon Sanderson. As always with this one I'm not going to give any details about what the synopsis says or anything like that because I know for a lot of people they don't want to know and that's part of the fun. But I am going to be doing, as I've done with the previous three secret projects, a spoiler discussion with some friends. The actual spoiler live show itself will take place over on Patreon and then it will go up later here on my channel. So if you're interested in that, be on the lookout. But that's it for October 1st. Now moving to October 3rd and getting into the Hurricane Wars. Before I even read the synopsis for this one, I just want to say the author for God Killer, I think I saw on Instagram that I think they'd already read it and they are super pumped about it and really liked it. And that's exciting because I really liked God Killer. I will say that author seems so excited and enthused about other authors' works, which I just think is really lovely to see. But anyway, getting to the synopsis of The Hurricane Wars, it says the heart is a battlefield. All Taliesin has ever known is the Hurricane Wars. Growing up an orphan in a nation under siege by the ruthless Knight Emperor, Taliesin has found her family among the soldiers who fight for freedom. But she is hiding a deadly secret. Light magic courses through her veins, a blazing power believed to have been wiped out years ago that can cut through the Knight Empire's shadows. Prince Alaric, the Emperor's only son and heir, has been forged into a weapon by his father. Tasked with obliterating any threats to the Night Empire's rule with the strength of his armies and mighty shadow magic, Alaric has never been bested. That is until he sees Taliesin burning brightly on the battlefield with the magic that killed his grandfather, turned his father into a monster, and ignited the Hurricane Wars. In a clash of light and dark, their powers merge and create a force, the likes of which have never been seen. Taliesin and Alaric both know this war can only end with them, but a greater threat is coming and the strange new magic they can create together could be the only way to overcome it. Thrust into an uneasy alliance, they will confront the secrets at the heart of the war and find in each other a searing passion, one that could save their world or destroy it. Sounds a little bit like Shadow and Bone. Am I the only one? I'm sure other people have thought that too. I'm sure it's like... <laughs> Do any of you notice? Of course, I'm sure some of you notice because we're talking about a character with light magic and a character with shadow magic and then they come together and their powers can create something bigger. So anyway, I think it sounds really cool and it kind of sounds like as much as I'm not a... What is the fan name for the Darkling and Alina? Darklina or something like that. I'm not a fan of that ship or whatever, but, um, but it feels like perhaps it's a little bit along those lines, except for far less, you know, uh, <laughs> of an issue. Regardless, I think it sounds fun. It sounds like it's going to be very good and I'm very interested in it. After that, we have the Scarlet Alchemist. As soon as I see Alchemist, I get excited. And this one says, Zalon dreams of becoming a royal alchemist, of providing for her family by making alchemical gold and gems for the wealthy to eat in order to stay young forever. But for now, she's trapped in her impoverished village in southern China, practicing an illegal form of alchemy to keep food on the table, resurrecting the dead for a price. When Zalon finally has the chance to complete her imperial exams, she ventures to the capital to compete against the best alchemists in the country in tasks she'll be lucky to survive, let alone pass. On top of that, her reputation for raising the dead has followed her to the capital, and the crown prince himself seeks out her help, suspecting a coming assassination attempt. The more Zalon succeeds in her alchemy, the more she gets caught in the dangerous political games of the royal family. There are monsters lurking within the palace walls, and it's only a matter of time before they and the secrets of Zalon's past catch up with her. So I like the idea of there being alchemy, and then also it seems like some kind of necromancy. It sounds like a a cool combination. After that is one that I had not seen talked about much, but it sounded pretty cool and very different. It's called The Jin Bot of Shantyport, and it seems like it's more sci-fi than fantasy, but maybe a mix. Uh, it says, Shantyport was supposed to be a gateway to the stars, but the city is sinking and its colonist rulers aren't helping anyone but themselves. Lena, a daughter of failed revolutionaries, has no desire to escape Shantyport. She loves her city and would do anything to save its people. This is, in fact, the plan for her life, made before she was even born. Her brother, Bador, is a small monkey bot with a big attitude and bigger ambitions. He wants the chance to leave this dead-end planet and explore the universe on his own terms. But that would mean abandoning the family he loves, 
even if they do take him for granted. When Shanty Port's resident tech billionaire coerces Lena into retrieving a powerful artifact rumored to be able to reshape reality, forces from before their time begin coalescing around the siblings. And when you throw in a piece of sentient off-world tech with the ability to grant three wishes into the mix, none of the city's powers will know what hit them. That has so many things <laughs> just thrown in. It, it just seems like once you get a grasp of like, okay, this is what that book is going to be, then there was something else. And the synopsis isn't that long. But there's just so many different things that sound really bizarre about that one. So I'm ex I mean, it sounds really cool. I don't know if I'll get to it right away. But I at least wanted to talk about it because maybe some of you can get around to it and hopefully you'll really like it. Uh, after that, we have The Endless War. So earlier in the year, the audiobook came out for this one. The author has, I think, an interesting uh, contract where the audiobook comes out first and then the physical copy. And this is the fourth book, kind of sort of second in the second duology of the Bridge Kingdom series. So if that was a confusing sentence, apologies. The Bridge Kingdom, there are four bo books and the first two are basically a duology and the next two are basically a duology. And the second one and the third one, the timeline kind of overlaps a little bit, but they follow primarily different people. So anyway, they, they are fantasy romance. They're more fantasy political romance. So there's not actually uh, any magic in the world. It's primarily just the politics and a different world than ours. And then you are following these different characters who, in this particular series, they are more enemies to lovers. Although the first one, the first set also were kind of enemies to lovers, but I feel like this one is even more so. Anyway, the fourth one comes out on the, on the fifth, technically, not the third, uh, because I, another odd thing is it would seem her books don't necessarily always come out on Tuesdays like a lot of other books do, but still, I'm excited about that one and we'll definitely be checking it out. After that, another really odd sounding one, but this one seems more like, um, like it's probably going to be horror leaning because of the author is the reason I'm making this assumption. It's called The Dead Take the A Train. Cassandra Kaw is one of the authors. And I read something by her for the first time this year, um, The Salt Grows Heavy, and that had amazing writing, pretty dense though. <laughs> and uh, it was filled with a lot of body horror, but this one sounds more sci-fi leaning. So it says it's uh, Cassandra Kaw and Richard Cadry. I haven't read anything, I don't think, by them. But it says, Julie Cruz is a coked up, burnt out 30 something who packs a lot of magic into her small body. She's been trying to establish herself in the New York City magic scene and she'll work the most gruesome, excuse me, gigs to claw her way to the top. Julie is desperate for a quick career boost to break the dead end grind, but her pleas draw the attention of an eldritch god who is hungry for revenge. Her power grab sets off a deadly chain of events that puts her closest friends and the entire world directly in the path of annihilation. The first explosive adventure in the Carrion City duology, the dead take the A-train fuses cause cosmic horror and Kadri's gritty fantasy into a full throttle thrill ride straight into New York's magical underbelly. A little different than a lot of the stuff I typically read, but I found a fair amount this year that I've really liked the books that are more sci-fantasy leaning, and I li I'm liking the different settings than what I'm accustomed to, so I hope that I end up liking that one quite a bit. After that, we have Sword Catcher by Cassandra Clare. So I don't know if I'll get around to this one right away, but I figured a lot of you are probably really interested, and I'm pretty sure it's going to be in some book subscription boxes because it's Cassandra Clare. So the synopsis for Swordcatcher says, in the vibrant city state of Castellane, the richest of nobles and the most debauched of criminals have one thing in common, the constant search for wealth, power, and the next hedonistic thrill. Kel is an orphan, stolen from the life he knew to become the sword catcher, the body double of a royal heir, Prince Connor Aurelian. He has been raised alongside the prince, trained in every aspect of combat and statecraft. He and Connor are close as brothers, but Kel knows he has one destiny, to die for Connor. No other future is possible. Lynn Castor is one of the Ashkar, a small community who still possess magical abilities. By law, they must live behind walls in the city, but Lynn, a physician, ventures out to tend to the sick and dying of Castellane. Despite her skill, she cannot heal her best friend, Miriam, without access to forbidden knowledge. After a failed assassination attempt brings Lynn and Kel together, they are drawn into the web of mysterious ragpicker king, the criminal ruler of Castellane's underworld. 
He offers them each what they want most, but as they descend to the world of intrigue and shadow, they discover a conspiracy of corruption that reaches from the darkest gutters of Castle Lane to the highest towers of its palaces. As long-kept secrets begin to unravel, they must ask themselves, is knowledge worth the price of betrayal? Can forbidden love bring down a kingdom? And will Lynn and Kel's discoveries plunge their nation into war and the world into chaos? I believe this is Cassandra Clare's adult fantasy debut, so I am curious to see how she writes adult fantasy, but I've not really read, I read one book by Cassandra Clare and it was when I was in high school and that's it. So I don't have a lot of experience, but I will be curious to see how she writes adult fantasy. After that, we have The Art of Destiny, which is a sequel to The Art of Prophecy. This is a sequel, I can't say too much. The first one is very much action fantasy and it takes some tropes that we've seen before with the mentor, mentee, and chosen one characters and then it sort of flips your expectations on their head. So I really liked it. It was very silly in a lot of places. There's really cool action scenes. So I am excited about The Art of Destiny. I had mentioned this one in my September anticipated releases because I had seen somewhere before that the release date was for September. So I think it got pushed back. So hopefully we'll be seeing it now on October 10th. After that, we have These Burning Stars and the synopsis for this one says, a dangerous cat and mouse quest for revenge, an empire that spans star systems built on the bones of a genocide, a carefully hidden secret that could collapse worlds hunted by three women with secrets of their own, all collide in this twisty, explosive space opera debut, perfect for readers of Arcadia Martin and Cameron Hurley. And then the more detailed synopsis says, June Ironway, hacker, con artist, and an occasional thief has gotten her hands on a piece of contraband that could set her up for proof that implicates the powerful Nightfoot family in a planet-wide genocide 75 years ago. The Nightfoots control the precious Sevite that fuels the interplanetary travel through three star systems, and someone is sure to pay handsomely for anything that could break their hold. Of course, anything valuable is also dangerous. The kingdom, the ruling power of the star systems, is inextricably tied to the Nightfoot's monopoly and they can't afford to let June expose the truth. They task two of their most brutal clerics with hunting her preternaturally stoic Chono and brilliant hothead Essek, who also happen to be the heir to the Nightfoot Empire. But Chono and Essek are haunted in turn by a figure from their shared past known only as Six. What Six truly wants is anyone's guess, and the closer they get to finding June, the surer Chono is that Six is manipulating them all. It's a game that could destroy their lives and devastate the stars, and they have no choice but see it through to the end. This one definitely sounds a lot more sci-fi, but I still thought it sounded really interesting. Seems like there's a lot to that plot and that it could be really epic, so I am very curious to see what we're gonna get with that one. Anyway, switching now to the 24th, and this will be the last one for today. We have A Curse for True Love. This is the third book by Stephanie Garber, the first being uh, Once Upon a Broken Heart. And I have just had such a blast with this series. It is super tropey, but I feel like it's very self-aware and it has so much fun with the typical YA tropes, fairy tale tropes, retelling tropes. It just seems like it takes a bunch of them and then it really embraces them. And then it just flies off the handles. It's just so bizarre and strange and eccentric and cheeky and weird. And I've had a lot of fun with this trilogy, so I'm excited to see what we get with the third one, especially after how the second one ended, because there's a little interesting shift at the end of the second one that I think a lot of readers were like, what? No. So I'm excited to see what we get with this third one. But anyway, that's it for some October anticipated releases. Let me know if there's any that I didn't mention that you're really excited for. Let me know if any of the ones I mentioned you are now excited for. And then of course, are you going to be picking any of these out? But anyway, thanks so much for watching. I hope you have a great rest of your day and I'll see you later. Bye.